5 film facts about Italian neuralism that you probably didn't know about. Neuralism, it's an Italian movement that originated in 1943, during Second World War. The main exponent are directors that decided to portray Italy without any filters, just showing the bad reality, a very sad reality that was brought by the war. The main characters of this movie are simple people, normal people. They usually live outside the city and they are heavily affected by the horrors of World War II. A very peculiar uh, characteristic about this movement is the fact that uh, most of the actors are just normal people. They're just uh, normal uh, people who never had acting experience who were taken from the streets. The main themes of neorealism were poverty, oppression and everyday life. Federico Fellini is considered the most famous Italian director from the 60s and his most famous movie is La Dolce Vita that portrays the story of a journalist living his life in Rome surrounded by actors and directors. This film originated a new term that is very well known now also in the American language and is paparazzi. In fact, in the movie there is a character who is a photographer of celebrities uh, whose last name is Paparazzo and that's what originated the term. Pier Paolo Pasolini is considered one of the most controversial directors ever because uh, he uh, talked about very blasphemous topics in his movies uh, and had many problems with censorship. His uh, most famous movie is uh, Salò or The 120 Days of Sodoma and it's considered one of the most disturbing movies ever uh, and it had very various problems to be released. Deboli creature incatenate. And also the figure of Pierpaolo Pasolini was considered very strange for the time because he was the first person who openly admitted to be homosexual in Italy. People think that he was probably killed by the mafia and somebody paid the mafia to do it and he was very strangely killed by his own car. He got run over by his own car and even after more than 50 years of his death people are not sure what really happened. Vittorio De Sica is uh, known for never wanting to use professional actors in his movie but to choose people that he met from the street, real normal people who never had the big experiences before and uh, his most big success, Bicycle Thieves, is entirely composed by a cast of uh, amateurs actors. A very important characteristic of neuralism is the fact that uh, they didn't want to show beauty, they want to show reality. So when they were looking for an actor, they didn't want uh, a beautiful actor or a talented actor, they just wanted a real actor to play a, a poor person, they wanted a real poor person. To play a sad person, they were looking for someone who could really embody the character. And that is the main thing that was completely opposite to the gold uh, Hollywood, uh, the golden age of the time. Another director of this movement is Lucchino Visconti, known for being the first real uh, neuralist directors who started operating during World War II. Because he started making movies during the fascist times, he got many problems with censorship because Mussolini didn't approve a negative portrait of Italy while Visconti wanted to show real life and reality. So many of his movies had a really hard time to get released. An example of uh, censorship for Lucchino Visconti was the fact that he made this movie called Sense where he wanted to portray this big battle that happened at the end of the 19th century in Italy. And what was important about this battle was that we were defeated as a country. But the most important scene of the movie, showing Italy losing a battle, was uh, um, cut in order for the movie to be released, because they couldn't accept showing Italy being defeated. <laughs> Fellini 
for our last film fact, we're gonna talk again about our friend Pasolini, who decided in 1964 to shoot a movie about biblical events called The Gospel According to St. Matthew. But he had a problem for this, because he couldn't find anyone who was perfect to portray his idea of Jesus. He looked everywhere, he had everything ready, the script, all the other actors, the costumes, the set, but he couldn't find his Jesus. One day, for a coincidence, this student from Spain decided to write an essay about him. And he had to meet Pasolini. When Pasolini saw him, he thought it was perfect, because it was exactly what he imagined for Jesus. So he decided to cast him. And he was so happy when he found him that he started screaming, I found Jesus, I found Jesus. And uh, it ended up uh, being considered by the critics one of the best portrayal of Jesus ever. Vale molto di più un uomo che una pecora. Dunque è lecito fare del bene in giorno di sabato. Getta le tue stampelle. If you are interested to know more about it, here are some of the most famous ones. 